What will you do with your freedom? Will you fight? One of the great lines from one of the great movies of all time, Braveheart. And it's reflected in perhaps the single most common question I get every day on this channel. What do I do? What do I do in the face of all of this wokeness and corruption and insanity? Well, today I am thrilled to be joined by someone who for many of you needs no introduction. He has for the last 50 years answered that call and he's been effectively fighting against all things secular, all things woke by building not just a parallel economy that we hear so much about, but indeed a parallel civilization, a revitalized Christendom that's growing, it's thriving, and the world is taking notice. Douglas Wilson has authored upwards of 80 books, one of which launched the amazing classical Christian school movement of which I was a part of for 20 years. All my kids have gone to classical schools. He's a founding member of the Association of Classical Christian Schools, whose membership has grown just in the last few decades from just a handful of schools to now over 500 across the country. He's the founder of New St. Andrews College. He's the pastor of Christ Church of Moscow, Idaho. And he's a founding member of an international denomination known as the Communion of Reformed Evangelical Churches. And in his free time, Doug also <laughs> founded a Christian publishing house, Canon Press, as well as production companies that have produced faithful Christian movies, educational content and the like. And that's all before lunch. His latest book, Mere Christendom, lays out his profound vision for a reawakened Christian society all over the world. And that vision is so in demand that the first printing of the book sold out even before it was released. But we're gonna show you how you can get your own copy. So Doug, welcome. It is an honor to have you on this channel. Well, thank you for the invitation. It's a privilege to be with you. That list of uh, accomplishments, um, I was, I was going over it today. I mean, it was just, it's, it's breathtaking. And I wanted to start by asking you really in effect, um, why, <laughs> <laughs> why weren't you just happy with the privatized therapeutic church, you know, the post-World War II social arrangement of the state shoving the church into the, away from the public square into the private sphere, you know, nestling the church buildings in between pizzerias on one side and dry cleaners on the other. Yeah. Well, you know, why weren't you happy with just being the pastor of a, you know, first Methodist body and yeah. soul aerobic classes on Tuesday nights, <laughs> bring your sneaks. <laughs> you're, why, you're have you been, why have you been busy building a world and why do you, why is it so important that others follow suit? So I'm uh, one of the things that I'm, uh, driven by and where all this started basically was I got married and we started having kids. And one of the things I learned from, uh, well, I learned it from the, probably the great George Gilder first, but civilizations are, are built by men with families to feed. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's it. It's it a great turn of phrase. Yeah. 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 Um, and civilizations. And, and so what happened was I was, a I, done my stint in the Navy, got out, we got married, we started having kids. And when our oldest was a toddler, she was running around the living room or something. And my wife said to me, Doug, I, I can't see handing her over to someone that we don't know mm -hmm. and say, saying, here she is, teach her about everything. Right. You know, right. and I knew at the time, I knew nothing about Christian education or anything like that. But I did know that I agreed with that. And, and so I, I said to Nancy, don't worry, uh, we'll have a Christian school started by the time Becca hits kindergarten. So that now the clock was running. And this is a I was a I got involved in all of this, in the first instance, as a concerned parent. So I didn't go to college and major in education or education theory or how to start a college or I, 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 that wasn't what I was into. I was just into being a dad and I had felt ripped off by my education. Uh, I just, I didn't want my kids to get what I had gotten or rather had not gotten. And, um, and so we just went into the deep end, starting with um, kindergarten 
we had we started Logos School, Becca's kindergarten year, and then one thing led to another. You know, everything. If you have um, Owen Barfield once said about C.S. Lewis that what he thought about everything was contained in what he said about anything. Wow. Wow. All right. So, so wow. that's what that's what worldview thinking is. Yeah. Everything is connected, right? Yeah. And so if you start thinking Christianly, if you start thinking biblically about topic A, yeah. it's going to slosh over into to- topic B yeah. and then topic C. And, and because you, if this is not something that you can uh, put into, uh, you know, a separate container and keep it there. So one thing led to another, what it, what it boiled down to. Um, and uh, so, uh, we started now it sounds pretty impressive he started all these things but you have to understand that uh, this is sort of the crazy guy who goes off and looks into the distance and say why don't we do this and then there are other competent right, uh, right. types behind him <laughs> right. who are kind of worried about him <laughs> 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 and they're tagging along behind saying well, let's see if we can help this guy keep him from getting committed. Yeah. Can we finish this other project first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, I remember, but I remember, you know, I've, I've heard you speak endless times, you know, at ACCS conferences. And one of the things that, a refrain that I've always taken away from your teaching, which is so profound, is, uh, and obvious, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of like a G.K. Chesterton thing, right? The, the, what are the, the apostle of common sense, as they'll call him. Mm-hmm. If you're going to fight the culture wars, you need a culture. Right. You need to be defending a culture. Right. And it seems that conservatives, so many conservatives think that voting Republican is often good enough, but th- but they seem to be missing that. Can, can, you, yeah. can you flesh that out for us a little bit? Yeah. You, yeah, you can't have tank warfare unless you have some tanks. Yeah. You, you can't have naval warfare unless you have sh- ships and you can't have culture war without a uh, uh, without a culture. Right. Now, what what evangelicals and conservative Christians in North America have sought to do is they have sought to fight a culture war. We, we have enough of a cultural memory mm-hmm. that we we know that something is wrong, but we're trying to fight a culture war against a robust secular world with a deracinated uh, evangelical Christian memory echo. Um, and, and you just can't do it. You, you need orthodoxy on the ground um, that is basically red meat orthodoxy. And if, if, if you don't have that, you're not going to be able to motivate any, anyone. You're not going to be able to explain to anyone why we're in the fight. Um, but if you start if, if you start teaching with authority, as the New Testament says that the way Jesus did, and not as the scribes, if you if you teach with authority and not as the scribes, and you say, you know, secularism has no answers. The, the, they can't answer the questions that would be posed to them by a bright sophomore uh, in a philosophy class. They have no answers. All they can do is shout you down or cancel you or, you know, call you a white supremacist. Uh, And so many uh, Christians who would ask these questions would then get spooked or scared off at the, at the vicious retaliation. And what has to happen is Christians have to grow a backbone and get in and get in the fray and say, no, I asked the question and you need to answer it. Um, Why should we do what you say? You know, why should we do what you say? Right. Uh, I th- I think that the great worldview issues in our cultural clashes today can be reduced to two playground questions. You you knew how to ask these questions in third grade. Um, why and who says? Right, right, okay. right. Okay. <laughs> and, but if they if um, if they come to me and say you've got to you've got to not have a gas stove because of climate change, I want to know why. And who says? Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 After that, it's come and make me. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the Charlton has it on my cold, dead hand. <laughs>